Looks like 8.30. I think that town clock's still a minute fast or so because we, we're on time according to phone time. Welcome everyone. Time for prayers from the attic. Up here in the rectory attic at St. Paul's Church in Nantucket is Olive. Hello. And uh, she's got her hat on tonight, hiding her, <laughs> her hairdo. Is that it, Olive? Yes, hiding my roots. Here's, here's, uh, you've seen the picture when, at our wedding when she was a Queen of Sheba outfit on in 1987. Here we have our, we cleared our altar a little bit. Ollie's going to bring the feather boa out. Well, look, we brought the Episcopal flag up. It's a new thing. Uh, we got the Episcopal flag. It's a little bit tattered from last year's. It's so windy out here. Oh, yeah. And we have our flowers from the yard and from the altar on Sunday. Welcome, everybody. Here we go. We're going um, horizontal tonight. We'll see if we have it right, Ollie. So far, so good. Joseph San, our dear Joseph. Yay. Jay, so good to see you, Jay. We invited some new friends too from Delaware. We hope that they're on. Our friends Charlotte and Amy. Hopefully, you're dialing in, you're trying, and uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, Jay Dentino's here too. Jane Barber, Jeff. He likes the see. He he's the one that likes the phone jazz. The rest of us think it's elevator music, but I should find out who the um, artist is, Jeff. I'm going to buy you that CD. Hi, for, Miranda. Buy you that CD <laughs> for Christmas. Hi, Lucy. Hi, hi Joseph. <laughs> we tried calling my mom on the um, conference call Jerry, machine, but she didn't go. Uh, Joseph's here. Yes. Judy, hello. Oh, Peter and Stacy, hello. Welcome. That's right, they hijacked someone's uh, account. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. so I love that they're conscientious to do that. But thank you for your message earlier, Peter. Ollie's, you can see Ollie's doing so well. Oh, that one, right, Ollie? Okay. We tried. We're still trying to bring him in on the phone. And so, good seeing everyone. <laughs> So yes, we're back up in the attic, Ali, after another busy day. Are we in the right elevation? It's kind of uh, shoulder heavy, but I guess I have to, should I lower it just slightly, Ali, or is we good? Just slightly, maybe slightly, just slightly. Oh, we can see the flag. Yeah, yeah the flag's in the background, because we're, we're, we're on the horizon, Ali, we're not just, how's that? All right, that's good. Beauteous, as my yeah. brother Johnny would say, that's beauteous, beauteous. Okay, Olive, so welcome to Prayers from the Attic in Compline. And uh, we had a busy day, Ollie, because today was our first distribution of food. Remember, we partnered through the Community um, Foundation for Nantucket, who was so great with the island in the middle of this crisis. It's a community foundation. I told Ollie um, someday. Um, Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte. So Hi, Charlotte. welcome, Charlotte. And um, so anyways, this Community Foundation, I told Ollie, Someday when I pass away, because I'm worth much more dead than I am alive, thanks to a church insurance from Pennsylvania where we served and some other things. I said, certainly gives money to the churches we love and the ministries we love, uh, the mission, right? The mission that we love. It's not, it's more than, it's not church, it's mission. And also, um, oh, very nice. And also, um, to a community foundation that we have here, because the, what, what the Community Foundation saw was that our chefs um, and restaurant people would suffer now through this pandemic. And, it, it's, and really, it, they employ so many people on our island, like any, any kind of um, resort, you know, beach resort, restaurant work is, is a, a major a mainstay of the island economy. And so, and also that people were hungry. Uh, our workers are, so many workers are out of work. And so the Community Foundation said, let's take some of this grant money we have, rather than just sitting on it and letting it be in the endowments, let's feed the people, employ these chefs, um, they're using us as one of the outlets for distribution. I delivered food myself. I brought doggy treats, Ollie, because they have a dog named Roos, mm -hmm. who is a big giant, um, Belgian, dog, a Belgian, Belgian shepherd, beautiful mm -hmm. doggy, I don't know. And so the, the, again, the food was for people that are 
living alone or older people, people in economic need, a combination. And we um, also, our Jamaican sister congregation, New Life Ministries, they identified some people. We have a ministry called Laundry Love through our outreach ministries. Um, and we, we identified families through our Laundry Love where we help you um, do your, actually fold your laundry, <laughs> not just um, provide the laundromat service. Um, and then more importantly, fellowship and dignity and respect. We were able to um, also feed some of those folks. But this wonderful young couple, uh, Mark, um, well, of course everyone's young uh, compared to me. Mark and, and Etna, her name is, an Irish name, um, Yell. Um, and they are just um, salt of the earth people helping to feed our community. So anyways, today was a kickoff and we fed, we had 52 meals that went out and um, I couldn't be happier with the folks of our parish um, and their big heartedness and helping to meet some needs here. And, and again, when we collaborate, we can do so much more together. So Ali's already saying, oh Lord, make haste to help us start with this service. And so page 127, if you have a prayer book at home, page 127, is our order for Compline. And we'll have simple prayers and then we'll go to our psalm. Okay. And Meeple's scratching at the door already. We're, he not, says, we're not gonna, we're gonna. Let me we you. Okay, is everyone ready? The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. And we skip this confession for Easter season, of course. On the next page, O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Okay, Olive, for tonight's... Um, Service, I chose him, to, uh, excuse me, Psalm 25, verses 1 through 14. In the prayer book, it's on page 614, 614, in the Book of Common Prayer. 614. And if you're in the Bible, if you're using the Bible, not the prayer book, it'd be a similar translation of the 25th Psalm, verses 1 to 14. I'll pray up to the asterisk. And then you'll finish uh, praying the rest of the psalm, if that's okay. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord. Forgive my sin for it is great. Who are they who fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that should choose. They shall dwell in prosperity. And their offspring shall inherit the land. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him. And will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord. For he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the, the Son. Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Okay, I think it's time for reading. It is time for reading? Okay. Is that right? That is correct. I think that's correct. Scripture reading. Today, 
or have a reading from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 9. Chapter 9. On their return, the apostles to told Jesus all they had done. And then Jesus, oh, don't peel that off. Oh, it says Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Jesus took them with him and withdrew privately to a city called Bethsaida. When the crowds found out about it, they followed him, and he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close, and the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions, for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men, and he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of about 50 each. They did so and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. What was left over was gathered up, 12 baskets of broken pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I put that backwards because we couldn't see your face while you were ah, reading. Ah, that's we, right. you, know, you don't need to see you it. know where to look. Hand me that uh, Bible, will you, Lou? Okay, good. So, um, yeah. This is a good reading. As I mentioned early on, not everyone was on at the beginning. Today, the our outreach ministries at St. Paul's Church started a new ministry, a, a feeding ministry, which is a great new mission for them and for us as a community. And, um, and it's, others are doing, doing it too, but I, I love that, uh, uh, the loving way that we're looking out for the community in different ways. And, and so, this, this, so this is a coincidence that I chose this reading. I was, I was looking at, um, I was inspired by a conversation earlier about a dear friend and colleague who's a prophetic witness and has been for so many years in uh, in our community and in our in our world and nation our nation and world, and this reminded me some years ago I went to a conference in Baltimore. It's when Ollie and I worked for the Bishop of Pennsylvania on his staff. I was a canon missioner for youth, and Ollie was the boss of the canon missioner for youth. My uh, my able assistant and administrator, and. Um, we tried to share an office space for a while. It was about as big as this um, uh, big attic. And said, then one time she locked me in my office because I had to go through her office to get out of the building. She locked me in to teach me a lesson. <laughs> and, that was a, and so then I, she kept me on a short leash. And, um, but uh, during the middle of all that, Ollie, and you did a beautiful job, you've been such a great administrator, you really had me organized. You're fi fi firing all cylinders in that diocese. Um, I went to a conference and they had this incredible preacher and he was from St. Thomas um, African Church in Philadelphia. It's one of the historic African-American churches in our, in our country. Maybe the, I think maybe the first African-American congregation in the Episcopal Church back in the 1800s, 1880 maybe. And uh, so, and his name is um, Jesse Anderson. Remember Father Anderson? Mm -hmm. He was a really cool priest. He wore these interesting hats that were kind of pointy. He looked like he was... Um, from, like Egyptian or something, interesting hats, um, and um, fabulous preacher. And he preached on this gospel. We were all people that were youth ministers and camp directors involved in, with teen and children ministry. And he said, um, he quoted Jesus. He said, you give them something to eat. You know, they said, oh, you know, send them away um, so they can go get something, you know, some food. Or, you know, there's not a... We don't have enough. There's, a, there's no abundance here. We're in this time of a pandemic or whatever it is. There's no abundance. We can't help. Uh, send them away. And he said, no. Jesus said, no, you give them something to eat. You, you do something about the injustice and the hunger in this, in this world, in this community. And, um, and some of us take that to heart. 
um, and say, uh, say yes to that. And then so often, um, not me personally, but thinking of other loved ones, um, like all prophets over many generations and thousands of years, what, what it says in the Bible, uh, Jesus quotes it, I, I guess, that a prophet um, isn't respected in his own hometown, right? That so often the prophetic voice can rile people. It reminds them of what, what God's uh, kingdom should be like um, and not what their plan for it is, but what's God's plan, what's God's will, which we know is justice and salvation uh, freely shared by all, um, our health, our well-being, uh, not the stuff that people put on God. And so I'm a little riled up, you can tell, because um, I, I heard of an important ministry down in Delaware, a prison ministry, where a, a prophetic voice was um, from people that I, uh, I thought I knew <laughs> and love, but now I've unfriended. <laughs> um, one of the meanest things you can do, of course, is either take people off your mailing list at church um, or unfriend them on Facebook now, right? Um, but um, I said, this is, uh, this calls, this is an injustice to have somebody, a prophetic voice that raises an issue, uh, then be bullied by a few um, uh, privileged uh, white men and um, discarded um, and rejected for their prophetic voice is what's, is what's wrong with our world now, isn't it? And so, uh, I'm going to remind you, today we have, um, um, I won't be all too, too critical and negative here, we have this um, book, Holy Women, Holy Men. We don't use it that much anymore. It was approved by General Convention in 2009, our General Convention, which meets every three years. It celebrates the saints. And so when we looked at our liturgical calendar, Ali said, well, there's no feast day that's noted today, because we look at that, you know, you can see we're theme, we're theme people rather than following a lectionary for our daily work. We do it on Sundays, of course. But, but in this book, today is, the, um, is, is recognized as a feast for a woman called Frances Perkins, public servant and prophetic witness. She died in 1965. She was born in 1880 in Boston, uh, educated at Mount Holyoke College and then Columbia University, which again in 18, um, that would have been the turn of the century, 1900, was rare for women. More rare, she was the first woman cabinet member of, uh, of, um, of uh, the US government, and that was for President Roosevelt. She was the Secretary of Labor for 12 years in the middle of the Great Depression. Boy, could we use her now, right? Could we use her now as, um, as so many people are unemployed? And during her, her years of public service, she, and she was a devout Episcopalian, that's one reason we, we note her, she was confirmed at Church of the Holy Spirit in Lake Forest, Illinois in 1905, so at age 25, faithful and active Episcopalian for the remainder of her life. And it says, during her years of public service, Frances Perkins depended upon her faith, her life of prayer, and the guidance of her church for the support she needed to assist, to assist the United States in its leadership to face the enormous problems of the time. But right, she depended on her church community, her faith, to help lead us through the, dep the Great Depression. And then also she would go on a retreat to Catonsville, Maryland, um, every month. She went on a retreat with the Sisters of the Poor. Sadly, those sisters, I think, left the Episcopal Church over the ordination of women priests. But that's another story. Yeah, Catonsville. Remember our friend Howard would said we have all these prayer cards from Catonsville. And one of the sisters used to come to our to All Saints Church. She had a great big, um, great big hat, old-fashioned habit, like Sister Betrill, the Flying Nun. Um, and so, anyways, so I just wanted to celebrate Frances Perkins because she, because of her faith, it gave in her community. It gave her a prophetic voice. And it's so it's so sad when some people of our own faith community embarrass us, reject us. Uh, publicly at board meetings, um, uh, you know, dismiss us um, like we have some kind of agenda except for the well-being of our community. Um, and in this case, the freedom of men and women coming out of prison back to a life and, and hopefully and blessedly not returning to prison. And so that's enough of my complaining for one night. But um, I just wanted to say, Ali, that we need to support 
those in the community that remind us that things aren't always um, rosy and that we can work together to change those things. My mother's always been that person. Again, my mother marched with Dr. King in Boston years ago. It made her a prophetic witness. I told you, it maybe I shared with you that at 91, she's gonna be 92 in September. She fell, was in a rehab center, and she was an advocate for a 100-year-old woman across the hall who could not speak for herself when um, the staff became abusive in the middle of the night. And so she was able to speak to the management and um, have the staff taken out of that ward, at least, that I believe fired. Um, and that was, she was inspired um, in her justice work by prophetic people like, uh, like the dear loved ones that we know um, in Delaware and Nantucket that, um, that strive for justice. And that's all I know, Ali Wolf, as my mother says when she hangs up the phone on me, that's all I know. We're going to get my mother on the phone maybe tomorrow night. We, she, did, she thought it was a solicitation when we called in the conference call. And, uh, but um, uh, Justice from Catonsville. So, Justice, you probably know that, uh, that, that um, the women, that um, the Sisters of the Poor, I think they're still there. Probably in smaller numbers this time. But I guess that's enough folly of my... That's right, he's fired up. Salt fired box, up and I'm tonight. on my uh, preaching box tonight. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, Otto, what time is it now? Uh, no, not prayer book time. It's the time to sing. Time to sing. Okay. Uh. Okay, Ali. So you can see, I'm sorry that we don't, a lot of you don't have this hymnal maybe because we have so few of them here. I posted it earlier. I'm going to wear Ali's uh, beret. Ali, what do you think? <laughs> we'll sing in French. <laughs> I like berets, Ali. Maybe we should get me a beret. Mm. Messes up my hair. When you have this kind of hair, Ali, you don't wear hats. <laughs> Okay, Ali, so, um, what page is it, Ali? What hymn? It's uh, page 54. So we think we know this one, but we know that we really don't know the beginning of it. And this hymn, you'll recognize if you saw the movie, the old movie, Titanic. Did you ever see the old one, Ali? The, not the remake? Yes, I did. And this is what the band played as the ship sank. But this, um, we're not sinking, we're rising. What do you think, Ali? Nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer to Thee. E'en though it be a cross that raiseth me, still all my song would be nearer, my God, to Thee.
Nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer to Thee. Oh, if on joyful wing, cleaving the sky, sun, moon, and stars forgot, Upwards I fly, still all my soul shall be nearer my God to thee, nearer my God to thee, nearer to Good Ali. Not knowing it, huh? Pulls it off. Okay, everybody. We're a little bit behind with my long, stormy sermon, but we'll continue now in our prayer book on page. Help me out, Ali. 132. 132. Page 132 of our Book of Common Prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I can't see your eyes. That's okay. Most of the time, it's not good. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us to the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here's a prayer for the oppressed. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon the people in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us. Help us to eliminate our cruelty to these, our neighbors. Strengthen those who spend their lives establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunities for all. And grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. Intercessions, Ali? Okay. Let us know if you have prayers and we'll add them. We're doing our best. Please uh, keep my sister Nancy in prayer. We will, Judy, keep Na add Nancy to the list. Okay. Oh, we pray for Charlotte and Amy. We pray for Lindsley recovering. We pray for Jan Janice's sister, Jean, for Luke's dad, for Carl. We pray for Brenda during the tra this transition time. We pray for Alice and her family, for Angela, for Ruthie, for Brookie. We pray for Bishop Alan Gates, for Renee Martini, for Christine's sister Lorraine. We pray for June and Alan, for Connie and Lizzie, for the Cutbill family, for Josie, Melissa, and Ellie. We pray yes. for Les Slate on Block Island, for Diane, for Kathy C., we pray for dear friends Janet and Pat and Blair and Missy, for Joseph. We pray for Normand, Adam, Tom and Marianne, Julie and Andrew and their kids, 
We pray for Skylar and Paula. We pray for those serving in the armed forces and their families, especially for Calic, Justin, Lucas, and Jeff working with our returning troops. We pray for Roberto and Aaron. We pray for the, of health. the entire Nantucket Cottage hospital staff and volunteers. We pray for Lucy's family and Luke's family serving the medical community. And also the MGH, our sister hospital, Mass General Hospital. We pray for all that are homeless and for the organizations that house them, especially Emmanuel Shelter in Delaware. We pray for the expanding mission of the outreach community or committee at St. Paul's on Nantucket. We pray for the med flight crews and for the Coast Guard crews. We pray for all the teachers as they continue to teach online. We pray for our island children and all children, especially those who live in abusive circumstances. We pray for Linda Peterson feeding Nantucket children from the Island Kitchen Restaurant. We pray for Julie and Matt and for all crew for food providers, and for Megan, cooking for the community of Rehoboth, and for Evan and Angela and Seth, and Joe, and, chefs on the island. And, and, Joe and Todd and all Nantucket chefs Mark and, and restaurant Edna. workers. Mark and Edna, yeah. We pray for dear friends Peggy and Sherman. We give thanksgiving for Daryl's progress as he recovers from COVID, and for Joe, his loving husband. We pray for Gail and Henry and Bruce and Brian and Max's mother, Jackie. And we pray for Diane's dog, Mozart. Oh. And I pray for Tony Neal, Minister Tony Neal, one of the, another prophetic voice in Delaware. Um, really working it alone now with the, with the Way Home Prison Ministry. A saintly person um, deserves a statue in the square. And anyways, so uh, what else, Ollie? I guess that's enough. We continue on page 134. Uh, again, that continuing to add your prayers. Um, we didn't mean to leave anybody out. 134. Okay. Here we go together, Ali. Guide us waking, O Lord, Lord and, and guard, guard us sleeping, sleeping that, that awake we may watch, watch with Christ, Christ and, and asleep we may rest in peace. peace. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Lord, you now have set, set your servant free. free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, kids. What else? We have a vestry meeting tomorrow, so please pray for our vestry and our wardens, and I give thanks for them, and pray for us as we continue to strive to do God's will in our community, our, the mission. And... Um, Ali has picked out for us this. Okay. We're connected, Ali. Oh. Hmm. Let's see, Ali. What do you got? D. Difficulties, Ali. Huh. Oh boy, sorry everyone. It was lined up. It's just being mm -hmm. temperamental. Here we go, Ali. Mm. Mm. Oh. Should we start it over somehow? Maybe I'll push a little thing. 
I would just hit that. There you go. Love you. Thanks for staying late. God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.